How's it going everyone? John here. Welcome back to another OBS Studio tutorial. If this is your first time here, be sure to go ahead and take a look at the playlist in the video description below. That way you can get all caught up on this series. But also, if you are new here, I do welcome you to the channel and I appreciate you stopping by. There's also a bunch of other videos on the channel that go over the technical side of streaming. So if you're trying to find something in particular, take a look at some of the other content on the channel and you might find what you're looking for. Now in this video, I'm going to be going over the settings of the OBS Studio, which is going to be found over here on the right hand side. When you click on settings, it will bring you to this screen here. Now I'm going to try to go through this as quickly as I can, just to give you guys the rundown on some things. Now I've already kind of gone over this with Streamlabs OBS, and there's also a lot of other YouTubers that go into this in a lot more depth. So if you're looking for like deep, deep dive on the advanced settings, it's probably not going to be the video for you. This is just a quick overview. So with that out and said, let's go ahead and jump in here. So the generals tab is going to be just very basic stuff. I mean, you can just kind of go through this yourself and really just kind of see if it's anything you need to add, like being able to, you know, change themes. You can do that your output stuff if you really want to have any type of like confirmation dialogue being shown up like when you start and stop your stream or you know when you stop a recording like if you want that stuff there you can add that in there snapping items on the canvas and stuff like that you know that's that's self-explanatory as well you know you can adjust the snap sensitivity you know if you want to make it less sensitive and stuff like that uh, but I mean everything else is pretty self-explanatory for this now moving over to the stream, this is where things get a little bit more into what you guys are probably looking for. So this is going to be where you're going to enter in the information for the service that you're going to stream on. So if you are streaming on one of, one of these that are already listed, you can go ahead and select them and then fill in the information. Now if you're streaming on a site that's not on here, like say Trovo, then you can click on custom, you can put in the server name and then the stream key for your profile over on whatever platform you're trying to stream on. Now for the outputs, there's the advanced and there's also simple. So I'm going to try to break this down as quickly as I can. So with simple, you have your video bitrate, your encoder and your audio bitrate. Video bitrate is going to be the internet speed that you have. So if your internet speed is say five upload and you're trying to stream, the best thing I can suggest is to have a wired connection because if you're using Wi-Fi, it's going to be inconsistent. You're going to have dropped frames. It's going to look really muddy. It's going to lag. It's just going to be a hot mess. So don't stream on Wi-Fi. Please don't do that. So let's say you are using a wired connection. Your upload speed is five and you're trying to do like 60 frames per second and so on and so forth for like 720p. Let's just say that you're probably going to want to have your stuff set to like 3500. So that's still not bad. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room and that's good. So you want to make sure you're not using the full upload speed because then you need you need to be able to have enough for your online stuff that you're doing and a little bit of buffering room. That way you don't run into any type of like drop frames or stutters or crashes or anything like that. So do keep that in mind. Also, it, you want to look online too to find out you know what the specs are rec like recommended for wherever you're streaming I know twitch and YouTube have a kind of like a breakdown of their bitrate settings for whatever people are trying to achieve in terms of like resolution and FPS so be sure to go ahead and take a look for for that information now down here for recording you can set the path for it you can adjust the recording qualities and stuff like that. I have mine set for MKV because I use Remux. If you use MP4 and for some reason your OBS crashes, you lost all that recording. So MKV allows you to still have that file and then you just have to go over to file, Remux recording, find the file, and then you can go ahead and Remux it. It will then allow you to bring it into like Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, wherever it is that you guys do your video editing. So back into the settings, we go into output. I think we're in, I think actually we're on advance right now. Okay. So yeah, let's go back to advance. So in advance, um, this is again, going to be really quick. So for the encoder, you can choose if you want to do software or hardware, you can do the same thing for simple software or hardware. Uh, if you're a single PC, you're going to want to use hardware if you have a dedicated graphics card. 
If you don't have a dedicated graphics card, like me, I have a 1070 graphics card for, for my uh, streaming rig, then you're going to want to try to use your software if you have a good enough computer. But um, what you're going to want to do is, you know, select whichever one you're going to for, for encoding. And then you're going to do the rescaling output if you are actually going to be rescaling. If you're not, then you can uncheck that. Don't worry about it. Rescaling basically means that if you're going to go from a 1080p canvas, which is this black box back here, and then you're trying to shrink it down to a 720p, that way you get that, I guess so that way you can get the much more um, crispier looking streams. It's very slight, but it's not like massively better, but it just, it's an option. And then you have your rate control. So there's different ones here. So you have your CBR or yeah, CBR, which is constant bit rate. I don't know what the um, CQP is. Um, VBR is variable bit rate and lossless. I, I don't know what that one does. <laughs> um, now for bit rate, again, we've gone over that. Keyframe intervals, I set it to two because that is what is recommended for where I stream at. Now, if you don't know what that information is for you, you can either try zero for audio or sorry, for auto, um, or you can try two and see if there's any type of improvement. So for me, I have it set for the NVIDIA uh, graphics card that I'm using. So I have these different options here. Now, for those of you guys that might be using a graphics card for it, let's go through the settings for that real fast. So max quality is probably going to be the best one to choose. I've found that one to be my personal favorite. Um, I've tried some of the others and haven't really seen much of a difference. So I just leave it on max quality. I set the profile to high. You can set it to main or baseline. I prefer high, that way it prioritizes it. And for the look ahead and the psycho visual tuning, it just requires a bit more of the GPU for whatever you're trying to do. Now, uh, you can just click on these question marks to see what they do. I don't do anything with the GPU number there. Probably should, but I just don't. <laughs> And then you have your max B frames. So the max B frames is going to be set to two or whatever the uh, website tells you that it should be. Remember how I was telling you that you want to find out the information about the bit rates and everything? It still applies here too. So if you're using software, now it changed. So now you have other options here. So you have for your presets, you have it going all the way from ultra fast down to placebo. Now, keep in mind that if you have a really mediocre computer, you don't have like an i5 or a Ryzen 5 or an i7, i9 or Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9 processors, then you're probably going to want to either stay on very fast or you're going to want to go up to super fast or ultra fast. The reason for that is because these two will use less CPU, but it adds like a grainy type of filter effect that you can't get rid of but it's less CPU on your, or less CPU strain on your computer. Now, very fast seems to be like the default norm, but once you actually have a really good computer, you can then move it down to like fast or medium or slow. And what this does is it adds more uh, processing heavy usage on your CPU. So if you don't have a really good like cooling system in your machine, or you don't have a really good processor I would not advise going past very fast you don't want to blow your motherboard or anything in your computer so just keep it on very fast if you don't have a very good computer or you can move it up to these other two for profiling again you can set it up to how I was explaining baseline main high I usually leave it on high tune you don't have to mess with and you don't have to worry about this area either so let's go ahead and bring my settings back and we're going to go to audio. So audio, you can leave your sample rate at 44.1 or you can change it to 48, whichever way you want to. Um, I would advise just to take a look at your speaker settings and see what you have your sample rate set to. Uh, for your default audio device, if you have multiple ones, you can select them. You can have two different types of audio devices. And same thing with microphones. You can have multiple microphones if you have them. So this could be good for podcasting. Um, or multiple people that are going to be in the same type of stream. So that works as well. And the rest of this stuff you don't even have to worry about. Like you just leave all this stuff defaulted. For video, remember how I mentioned that this black box is your canvas? Well, you can either set that up to 1080p or whatever 
resolution you want to um, and then you can downscale it if you need to so the way that I was explaining it earlier is people will go with a 1920 by 1080 and then they will try to downscale it to 720p that way it gives it a little bit of a sharper look and then you're going to want to go with one of these two here either by cubic or um, I can't even say this one but yeah one of these two now if you are trying to do 60 frames per second you can try it but if you're not able to then you're going to want to bring it to like 30. so this is another thing that matters on your upload speed and also your computer so there's like so many different things that tie into this when it comes into the actual settings so if your computer's not up to par but your internet is then you're gonna have a hard time really pushing the 60 frames per second so you're gonna probably have to bring it down to 30 and that's fine because a lot of people can't even really see the 60 frames per second anyway depending on where you're streaming so if you don't if you're not even offered the option to have 60 frames per second even being presented then you're wasting resources and you might as well not even bother trying to stream in 60 frames per second you can play your game in the 60s or you know higher than that but you just won't be able to stream it if the platform doesn't support you doing it like i know twitch doesn't always support it especially if you're not an affiliate so if you don't have the transcoding option for it which allows people to change their resolution then you're pretty much wasting resources on your computer but places like youtube you'll be able to have the option for people to change the resolution. So if you can actually push 60 frames per second, then you'll be able to uh, actually offer that for people to watch it in that way. So for hotkeys, this is very simple. It's basically just adding a key on your keyboard to initiate one of these here. So if I wanted to start streaming, I would just click in this box here and I'll give it either just some random button on my keyboard, like page up. And if I wanted to stop streaming, I can do something like page down. And now I have these two on my keyboard. So you can also do this with scene switching. So if I wanted to switch a scene here, I could then, you know, change that to page up. And then I can get rid of this one by clicking on the delete or the trash can. And anytime I want to switch from this scene to another scene, you know, I just have to keep giving it a different key on the keyboard. And that's pretty much how you do hotkeys. So for the last one, your advanced, this one is going to be where you can choose the processing priority. So you can leave it on normal or you can set it up to these other ones. It's probably going to add a little bit more uh, CPU usage just because you're giving this program priority. And for video rendering, you can just leave it on here. This is the only option I have. I don't know if you guys are going to have different options or not. Now for color format, I tried to figure out if there's really a big difference. If you try to change it, it's going to give you this, this stupid message down here saying that color formats other than the NV12 are primarily intended for recording and are not recommended when streaming. Streaming may, um, let's see, st streaming may incur increased CPU usage due to the color format conversion. So go ahead and give it a try, see how it works, and then if you don't like it, then just bring it back to the NV12. I do recommend having your color space to be 709 with your color range being set to full. The rest of this stuff you don't even have to worry about. Uh, no, I would definitely enable though uh, the automatic reconnect if it's disabled. That way you have it um, in case it crashes. But other than that, there's really not much else that you have to worry about. But that is pretty much a quick rundown through the like through the settings and everything like that. Like I mentioned, there's a bunch of other YouTubers that do a complete deep dive on this. But this should just kind of give you a quick rundown and an understanding of like what the different sections are and what to pay attention to and stuff like that. I know I kind of dragged it on a little bit on the example, but I just want to stress enough that not every computer is going to be able to stream. It's, it's definitely an investment. So if you have a really old computer, I definitely don't recommend you trying to stream off of it. You know, it's, it's getting to the point to where you're going to need a really good computer to be able to do stuff like that. But let me know what you guys uh, think of, you know, the settings and everything like that. If you have any questions, you can always ask me in the comment section below. And be sure to go ahead and take a look at the other content on the channel. And if you're enjoying that content, be sure to go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell icon and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching and take care.